Hi and welcome to Devlog 2 about my yet to be named cozy creature collecting and management game. Early on I made a decision that I will develop the game visuals in parallel with the gameplay implementation and that's what this devlog will be about, more specifically outlines. Implementing outlines might seem trivial but is actually quite an undertaking. So I want to thank the creators of some great resources I found online, which I've linked in the video description, as well as all of the different objects I use to debug my implementation. The approaches to outlines are many, one of which is inverted hull outlines, where in a separate pass each vertex position of an object is offset in the normal direction. Front face culled, so only the back sides are rendered, and this is then colored in the color that one would like the outline to have. Even with eventual fixes for the most obvious artifacts of this approach, the result would still not match my vision. Nor, in my opinion, visually outperform the result of a screen space outline approach, which is what I eventually implemented. This solution utilizes both a scene depth texture and a scene normal texture to get pixel perfect outlines. Because of this, my initial thought was to implement it utilizing the post processing stack in the universal render pipeline. Unfortunately, it turned out that quite a lot had changed since I last worked with custom post-processing effects, and the old post-processing system no longer works with newer versions of the universal render pipeline. So I regrouped and opted for a custom renderer solution instead. In short, and straight from the documentation, a renderer feature is an asset that lets you add extra render passes to an URP renderer and configure their behavior. So I created a new class, ScreenSpace Outlines, which inherits from scriptable renderer feature. While it's easy to get access to the scene depth texture, it's just a matter of enabling the depth texture in the universal render pipeline assets. Getting access to a normal texture with good enough quality is another problem. My first approach included camera stacking and replacement shaders, but I eventually found a better way in having two separate scriptable render passes in my renderer feature. One which generates the scene view space normals texture and one for the outlines. I initialized these in the create method with an argument controlling when in the render pipeline they should execute and I enqueued them in the add render passes method. At this state the view space normal texture pass contains a constructor and the overridden methods configure, which is called before the render pass, execute, which executes the render pass, and on camera cleanup, which is called when the camera is finished rendering. This pass would render to a texture, and for that I needed a render target handle, which I initialized in the constructor. In the configure method, I then call getTemporaryRT, which creates a temporary render texture and sets it up as a global shader property. Initially, I used the camera render texture descriptor with point filter to set up the render texture, but figured that I would like some more control over the render texture settings, so I created a custom view space normal texture settings class. Added it as a property to screen space outlines so I could set these settings from the editor and then populated that class with some settings. In configure, I then created a new render texture descriptor based on the camera texture descriptor, but with some adjusted settings. And this was then passed as an argument to get temporary RT. Next, the configure target method is called with the normals render target handle identifier as an argument to add this as a render target for this pass. Lastly, a configure clear method call is executed to clear the render texture with the specified background color. Because even though the render texture is released in the on camera cleanup method, the get temporary RT method can still return a cached render texture. In the execute method, a command buffer was fetched and a new profiling scope was defined. Before I used the command buffer within the scope, it needed to be clear. The scriptable render context was then used to draw renderers with the rendering data call result, 
This method needs some draw settings as a second argument, so I created one such struct. The first argument is a list of shader pass tags that should be drawn. Currently, my project only utilizes Unity default shaders, so I created a list of these tags in ViewSpace Normal Texture Pass. And passed that as the first argument to create drawing settings. The second argument was the current rendering state, and the third was the criteria to sort the objects being rendered both of which were passed on from the execute method arguments. These were then the draw settings for the draw renders call. The last argument was filter settings, which describes how to filter the set of visible objects. And initially, I just set this to default. Lastly, the command buffer gets executed and released. At this point, the rendered texture just looked like this because the override material variable in draw settings has not yet been set. And the objects rendered are therefore rendered as is. So a material was created in the constructor. If the specified shader could not be found, this render pass should exit. Otherwise, it should continue with the override material set. With this in place, it was time to create the shader in question. Initially, I developed all the shaders for the outline effect in HLSL, but eventually I opted for a shader graph solution instead, mostly for the abstraction. Instead of rendering the objects with a pure base color, I set the base color to be the view space normal, but remapped from minus one and one to zero and one. With this shader in place, the view space normal texture pass was almost done. In this game, I want the foreground objects like characters, creatures and items to have a simplistic, cel-shaded style featuring outlines, while I want the background environment to have a detailed and complicated but still colorful shading without outlines. So apart from generating a scene view space normal texture, I also wanted this texture to work as a mask only including objects that should be outlined. This was easily achieved by utilizing the previously mentioned filtering settings. So a layer mask was added to the screen space outlines class. This was then used in the view space normal texture pass constructor to create filtering settings. which would then be the last argument to the draw renderers method. Now, the generated scene view space normals texture would only include objects that eventually would be outlined in the screen space outlines pass. Similar to the normal texture pass, the outline pass would override the execute method, which would fetch a command buffer, define a new profiling scope, and also end with a command buffer execute and release. Instead of adding a draw renders call in the execute method, the screen space outline pass would add a blit command, which copies a source texture into a destination texture using a shader. The shader in question would be the screen space outline shader. Unfortunately, using blit with the same source and destination, like this, could result in undefined behavior. So instead, a temporary render texture is created and some extra steps in the blit process are added. With this render pass implemented, I created the outline shader. The basis of the outline shader is to use the Roberts cross edge detector on the depth texture and normal texture separately. The thresholded result would then, in unison, decide if a fragment should be an outline or not. Multiple texture samples would be needed for this, so first I created a custom node source file, which given a UV coordinate, a texel size vector 2, as well as an offset multiplier, would calculate 4 new UVs. I added the node and its inputs 
the UV input is just the UV node, which in this case, since the shader is used with a blit command, is the screen position. The texel size was calculated using the screen node and an outline scale property with a default value of 1 as the offset multiplier input. This property value would control how far from the original screen position the samples would be. The Roberts cross-computed derivative was then calculated using this node to take four depth texture samples. Then subtracting the bottom left value from the top right value and squaring it, and subtracting the bottom right value from the top left value and squaring it. Adding the result together and lastly multiplying the root of that with a Roberts cross multiplier. The result visibly showed the depth based edges. Thresholding this value resulted in nice depth based outlines. A similar series of calculations was then done with the scene view space normals texture. The non thresholded output looked like this. while thresholding it returned the normal based outlines. The depth based and normal based outlines were then combined by a max node. This artifact originates when a surface is seen from such a steep angle that the computed derivative from the depth samples exceeds the depth threshold. I.e. there is such a big difference in depth over a small distance so a edge is detected. One could increase the depth threshold, but that leads to the opposite problem. Parts that should be outlines no longer are. Instead, the solution was to increase the depth threshold based on the angle between the normal of the surface and the direction from the camera to that surface. White corresponds to a big angle, while black corresponds to a small angle. Before this value was multiplied with the depth threshold, it was transformed from a linear scale to an adjustable range. With correct property values, this artifact was now more or less gone. The only thing remaining was to make the outline decide the alpha, add the option to decide the outline's color, and finally, only show outlines for objects including in the mask. I can't even put into words how much I love this effect. Unfortunately, one issue remained. Outlines were being drawn for culled parts of objects, since it's not getting culled in the normals texture. This was fixed by creating an outline occluder shader and then rendering occluder objects to the normals texture with this shader. I hope you love the outlines as much as I do because they are going to be the foundation of the visual style for this game. This is the end of this devlog, and the process involved a lot of documentation reading, so if you find any errors or any way to improve something, let me know. If you want to follow the continued development, you can always subscribe to the channel. Make sure to click the bell to be notified when my next video releases. Bye.